doctor. I am going to just make sure I'm up on all of my platforms here. Does everybody have a good weekend? is October 5th. Hmm. Odd. Five videos. There we go. Okay, sorry guys, hang on. All right, YouTube, I can see you if you're up. And now let's go to um, <clears throat> Facebook and make sure I'm up there. Hi guys, hi Carla, hi Donna. Hi. Okay, let's see. Yep, there I am, okay. All right, oh, Becky's on, Missy's on, hi. All right, and Debbie from, from Kentucky. Lawrence, hi. Oh, good. He says his weekend was good. And Linda from Texas. So mine was kind of odd. Um, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and say hi and tell me where you're from. <laughs> Carla, hi, sweetheart. So, oh, Nancy, hi. Uh, so my, this weekend was kind of uh, busy. I didn't really mean to be busy. Hi, Mom. Hi, Caroline. Um <clears throat> I uh, actually put together, and Jennifer from Alabama's on. Okay, I promise, if you are here, dialed in for the content, it's coming. I just want to say hi to my friends. Hi, Bryce. Um, so this weekend, I got up early on Saturday, and I finished my, the pillow that I started. <clears throat> Look how cute. With my glow-in-the-dark thread from the sip and sew Friday night so that is all done and I already got my first compliment at my dinner party uh, last night <laughs> hi Sarah from Houston I hope so much charm is doing awesome and Kathy from Decatur Illinois thanks for joining me and then on Saturday morning I woke up oh good Carla says looks fantastic super cute and I did this cutie pie so this is the next um, pattern in uh, the Road to Nebula, or Journey to Nebula, I'm sorry. So I did this pattern last, or over the weekend, gazebo. And I have to say, it went together super duper easy. I liked it so much that I actually am considering making a few more blocks and potentially making, um, you know, something a little bit bigger out of it. I, I literally took me like maybe an hour. Um, very easy, very, you know, fun to kind of throw together. Kathy's here. Hi, Dan. Hi, Kathy. Oh, and Lisa from Connecticut. Everybody likes the pillow. <laughs> Becky's here. Betsy from Maine. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a few more little charm packs, um, in the Halloween fabric. So I think I, I was thinking about doing a few more. This is my, um... All Hallows Eve is kind of my sophisticated Halloween. And then this is Goose Tales. Oh my gosh, it has cats on it. I had, didn't even look on the inside. This is so cute. Look at the little fat cats. Come on. <gasps> Sharon, you're coming to my class on Saturday? Yay! Okay, so for those who are local to the Seattle area, I am having my first maintenance workshop since the end of February, this Saturday at Quilting Mayhem in Snohomish. I might cry. I am so excited to be out. And I mean, the, these last couple of weeks have just started kind of coming together a little bit for me. And oh my gosh, I, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna sleep on Friday night. It's just not happening. Oh good, Sarah says, so much karma is doing great. Thank you, just added 10 more memberships. Congratulations, girl. Uh, to our VIP Quilting Club for November's membership packages. Super exciting. And Aubrey is on from Sunny AZ. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and, oh, Sarah says, love that fabric. 
All right, so we have um, two questions tonight that we're gonna talk about for the, for the Ask Your Doctor. And I thought I would give you guys a sneak preview. So this was the Junipine block from last week on our, um, on our, oh gosh, you guys, the words are not coming. Our quilt as you go. And then this is this week's, it's Bisbee. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Bisbee, Arizona, which is actually known as the artist capital of AZ. So these little flying geese triangles here, these are going to be free form like fusible web. You can, I guess you can needle turn it if you want to, but um, so I'm going to have to put some templates out uh, uh, with the instructions this week. Um, totally looking forward to that. So that will be Wednesday for my live uh, four o'clock Pacific Standard Time right back here. Oh, and Seed Stitch 13 Spokane here. Yay, Spokane. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. All right, Jennifer said, you told us what fabric you could you used in the sew along blocks, but can you please tell us again? Absolutely. So I used the ombre fabric from E.E. E. Shank. Uh, I don't, Gelato is the name, Gelato. And all I did was I bought a fat quarter, like a big fat, fat quarter pack of it. And that's what I've been cutting into. So that's why my color gradations are kind of all over the place because I have like so many different versions, like every cut of it. So that was what I used on my, on my sampler. Sarah says we went to our first quilt show this past weekend. Oh, you got to go to a quilt show? Oh my gosh, she said. <laughs> Girl, I feel every bit of your next statement. We were so excited to see people. Everybody was so excited. I am a hugger and it is going to be all I can do to not touch people this weekend. I've been like trying to practice like the elbow bump. <laughs> wanna freak anybody out look I'm already getting teary eyed about it just thinking about how life could return to normal um Sarah says I love that gelato it's amazing I love that fabric and Sarah says that pillow is so cute will make a great quilt also I think so too all right guys um let's get to our two questions <clears throat> so Ray why don't you go ahead and throw the first question up oh I we can't sorry Ray is listening, but she is not producing because our software died right before I got on. I won't, I won't bathe. Oh, <laughs> Sharon said I won't bathe to help you. So sweet. Okay. Oh, so much more. Melanie Mitchell. Hello from Dr. Mel in St. Bay, in Bay St. Louis. Hello. Finally home. Yet another hurricane coming. Bought another bunch of fabric and Dustin. Love ya. Melanie, girl, child. You need to move. <laughs> How many ev evacuations is this for you? Goodness. There's another quilt show in Hempstead, Texas on November 14th. Wow. We up here in Seattle are not cleared for takeoff on quilt shows. I had one um, scheduled next month. In sorry, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, someone called in. Uh, so it makes my phone glitch out. I apologize. Um we are not clear for takeoff. I, I can only have 10 students in a massive room at Quilting Mayhem in Snohomish. So um, shows are probably a ways off for us. Anyway, so our first, oh good, Sue Ann, hello, I'm live with you finally. <laughs> she says, I love your t-shirt. Okay, do you guys see this? I turn fabric into quilts. What's your superpower? Right? Sue Ann, these are your questions. So glad you were able to join us. So Sue Ann's first question was regarding um, oil versus grease. What's the difference? This is kind of an excellent question and I actually don't take enough time to really talk about this. And there are some significant differences. And if used wrong, either one of these used incorrectly, you can really damage your machine. So let's talk about that really quick. Oh, Donna said, I need to know more about Hempstead. I am only an hour away from there. So Hempstead, Texas has a show on November 14th. Sarah, where is the show at? I'll communicate. Bonnie Pelton. Hi, sweetheart. Melanie, oh, this is our fifth evacuation, but sewing my head off. Yeah, just to not freak out, I'd be sewing my head off. Goodness. So oil, let's start with oil. 
oil is not particularly special. Um, these are the tubes that we sell. The reason why I like them is they have this telescoping end to them so you can really get your oil in the right precise place. And it's important that you're pretty conservative with your oil use, especially in the head of the featherweight because if you get totally carried away, uh, then you can it can drip down on your project while you're sewing, so you don't want to do that. Um, oil is meant for the oil holes, so there are holes or, or points uh, throughout the featherweight across the top, behind the face plate. If you flip her over on her back, there's more oil points in the bottom, um, one in the bobbin. Oil is for oil holes. Oil is not special, and it doesn't necessarily have a shelf life. If it turns yellow, you probably don't want to use it. Notice how mine is nice and clear and white. So oil um, is good to use in some places every eight hours of sewing. So even if you got a little oil can with your machine, as long as the oil isn't uh, yellow or dirty looking, technically you can use it. If you got oil with your Foth or your Bernina or another machine, you can use that on the featherweight. Oil isn't particularly special and it has an extra long shelf life to it. Grease, on the other hand, a totally different beast. Miss Sue Ann. Oh, <laughs> good girl. She said she bought a table. Sue Ann bought a table for her featherweight. No quilt shows here either. Maybe only, yeah, only 10 people per event. Girl, we're in the same boat. I hear ya. Okay, Sarah, um, for Donna on YouTube. Nope, you're on Instagram. She said that the... Uh, t t their Facebook page for the show in Hempstead, Texas is at KC Charity Quilt Show, all spelled out. So at KC Charity Quilt Show, all spelled out, is their Facebook page. You can get more information about that. Okay, grease is very special. And there's only a half of a handful of people that make the right grease across the country. Featherweight Doctor being one of them. So the reason why grease is special is because you never, everybody listen to me, stop doing whatever you're doing and listen closely. You never put oil in the grease ports of your motor, only grease. I'm glad that you got the information, Donna. So this is the syringe that we sell. It is um, the right viscosity or melting point for your machine. It ha has a nice pointy end on it, so that way you can really sink it deeply into the grease ports on the motor. There are two grease ports on the motor, one on top of the motor and one on the front of it right here. Um, grease goes in on your gears, so you have an upper set of steel gears and a lower set of steel gears in the bottom. Grease can go on to those to help um, help with the smoothness of the of the when it's stitching. That's the gears are the drive system for the machine. Also, grease goes in the motor. That is it. Just those two places are the only place that you put grease. Your motor should be greased about every well for for regular use, I would say six months. For occasional use, you want to grease about once a year. And you, there's some little baby straws in the tube that we sell, and you can use that to take out the old grease and then top off the ports with the new grease. So there's a very big distinct difference between grease and oil. Oh good, yeah, Donna just said how, to, how often do we grease our motors. Um, if you're using the machine like every day, I'd say every six months, if you're using it once a week, once a month, once a year is fine to change your grease out. So that is our first question. Oh, okay. So, oh, I didn't know that. So Sarah said that it's the Knights of Columbus charity quilt show there in Hempstead, Texas. Free entry, free parking, door prizes, giveaway every 30 minutes, raffle basket, silent auction. Wow, live auction, even a chicken fried steak dinner. Hello. <laughs> it's a huge fundraiser for the local charities in Waller County. County, That is awesome. It's pretty awesome. I've been a few years, every last few years, and every year it gets better and better. That's cool. Sarah, so I was kind of desperate for a quilt show. Uh, was it last week? And I was seriously trying to figure out how to have like a, 
okay, don't laugh at me, but like a driveway quilt show. I, if I could get access to some standards to hang quilts, I seriously was going to put like several of my own masterpieces out on the road and put a sign or like a note out on our next door app that if people want to come by and see quilts for an informal social distancing quilt show, I was going to make it happen. I can't figure out how to hang them. And really it's like hit and go, hit and miss with our weather out here in Seattle. It's supposed to be kind of crummy today and I plan to make white bean chili for dinner and now it's like sunny and chili does not sound good. Um, Sharon wants to know, will you have grease to sell? Yes, I will have grease to sell on Saturday, my friend. So yeah, I'm pretty jealous that you guys are, some parts of the country are already starting back with quilt shows. Um, okay, so Sue Ann's next, <laughs> Sue Ann's next question came uh, regarding darning feet. Will any old darning foot work on your featherweight? Oopsie, not really, Sue Ann. So let me, let me preface that. So first of all, there was a darning foot that came with two two twos back in the day because they have feed dogs that drop. And so this is one of those fancy little uh, darning feet that came with the two 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 uh, back in the 50s. I actually don't like this foot very much, um, mostly because it's really noisy and metallic-y sounding, and I don't, I don't want to hear that. I mean, one of the reasons why I use my featherweight is because it's so quiet and smooth, and when you put this guy on, it sounds like a freight train. So it's loud and noisy, and I don't think it works all that well, to be perfectly honest with you. The, screen, the spring um, pinches here. So that way the foot doesn't pinch down on your fabric. It just kind of holds it there. It also has a really small eye on it, which I find kind of difficult to see. I like having a bigger hole in the darning foot to be able to see better. So is that your featherweight smoking? No, my featherweight isn't even plugged in. <laughs> so it definitely shouldn't be smoking. Well, what if your featherweight is smoking? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> If your featherweight is smoking, Linda Wheeler on YouTube, that might mean that someone put oil in there. So what you have to do is kind of slowly burn it off, the oil, by bringing it up to temperature after a few minutes and letting it cool all the way down and then bring it up to temperature and let it cool down and up to temperature and, you know, slowly kind of burn it off. Um, then it'll stop smoking and then put it, put the right stuff in there. So that way it's that doesn't smoke anymore. So this is the original vintage foot. These feet alone sell for about a hundred dollars. Not worth it, in my professional opinion. They're they're really not. If you are if you have a two 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 and you're trying to complete your set, worth it. But if you're looking for a darning foot to use on your two two one, there are better options that are a fraction of the price. So that is the original darning foot. PVC pipe squared. Off in buckets of rocks. Debbie, was that for meant for me? I don't know if that was meant for me. Okay, so I have gone through a plethora of different darning feet as to which one works best on the featherweight. Because two two ones were start made back starting in the thirties, they didn't have a um, a vintage part with the two two ones. The first thing they developed was the, the one for the 222 in the mid 50s. So I have gone through a couple of different versions, uh, Sue Ann, of the darning feet, the more modern darning feet. And um, this is one of them. So this one is what, do you guys see the circle here? This is literally called a closed toed darning foot. Darning feet have a couple of different. Um, characteristics to them. First of all, they're springy somewhere along the way. They have a spring or something so that, again, it doesn't pinch the fabric down. You can still move the fabric around underneath it. It just kind of holds it there. Um, the They also have a circle and a closed circle is called a closed toed darning foot and the an open circle. So this is a closed toed darning foot and open toed darning foot looks like this. So this style of darning foot, I have seen with this little cutout right in here and making an open toed. It doesn't really do anything in particular. It only um, 
a, takes away a step when you're trying to bring your threads up when you're in free motion and you need to bring your bobbin thread up to the top to start. Having an open toe darning foot removes one little step to doing that. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. You just have to get accustomed to whichever one you're using. So this is one that it's a it's called a universal low shank darning foot. I this only works on about I'd say 70% of the featherweights that come through my shop. Then I found this guy. So this guy is the one that I really like. It works on 95% of the featherweights that come through the shop. And the spring on this is the bend. You guys see that? So it doesn't pinch down, it holds the fabric nicely and it allows you to kind of move it around in a fluid motion. Okay, Melanie said, I just bought a button holder for my featherweight coming soon in the post, very cool. For garment makers, what other accessories do you recommend? Oh, that's actually a really good question. Melanie, I'm not a big, oh, I see. <laughs> Debbie's, Debbie's suggestion for PVC pipe squared off in buckets of rocks was to hang quilts. Thank you. I was like, what are you talking about, girl? <laughs> um, so, Melanie, a good, some other good accessories for garment makers in my professional opinion. Well, first of all, let me rephrase that. I am actually not a professional garment sewer. I'm a professional quilt maker. So I would think that the bias tape, uh, the multi-slotted bias tape maker would be helpful. The rolled hammer would be helpful. Actually, the, the six feet that would have originally come with the machine were the ones that were sold by Singer that uh, were intended for mending and garment construction. So any of those six feet would be helpful. I don't know, like the um, the ruffler would not exactly be, uh, you know, something timely that would be used in 2020, um, but it would have come as part of an original set. Um, so those, the, the original six feet that would have come with the original machine would be a good addition. The button holder that you're getting will have some cams with it and it also should have the plate cover that holds it, that covers up your feed dog. Um, because what happens is the literally the fabric is the thing that moves side to side. But again, the needle is fixed. So it's a big honky foot. But um, I, I tried it out with a, with a friend. She's actually watching uh, her name, Sharon. And it was kind of cool how the whole thing worked, I thought. Um, Melanie says, if I'm going to buy a foot for quilting, which one do I get? So for Melanie, do you mean for piecing or quilting? Uh, for piecing, you would want a quarter inch piecing foot. I like the one without the guide that we sell on our website, featherweightdoctor.com. And if you mean for the actual quilting, you would need, <clears throat> if you were going to free motion, you would need this little foot. We sell this for $12 on our website. And if you were going to do the straight quilting, it would be the walking foot that we sell on our website, which is $30. This is the one, again, I've gone through a couple different versions and this is the one that I like the best. So, oh, Kathy's on, hi Kathy. Lauren says, what is that black plastic looking thing on, oh, she, you're very intuitive. This is a, a thread cutter. So of all of my clients that purchase featherweights, the two things that they wish the featherweight had that their modern machine has the first one hands down is a needle threader because it is kind of a pain in the tail to thread the needle from side to side the next thing people want is a thread cutter but the thread cutters the original vintage thread cutters that fit on the shaft of the machine get in the way of some of these other type feet like the darning feet and the walking feet so and they're so dull they are so dull most people have pulled them off but this is an aftermarket foot. I'm sorry, this is an aftermarket cutter that we use on our featherweights. Um, and it was developed by some guys that were on Shark Tank, and it's called Threads. Thread, what is it called? I think it's called Threads with a Z, but we sell them on our website. But look, all of a sudden I have a thread cutter on my machine, and I don't have to grab my pair of scissors. It's pretty awesome. All right, so Saley, or Sarah said, Bailey is doing something cute. I have to take a pitch. Be right back. <laughs> well, go take a picture. All right, B Bonnie said, I use my ruffler attach knife. Oh, you used your ruffler, Bonnie. That's cool. 
That is, yeah, our thread cutters. Exact. Oh, thanks, Ray. <laughs> Girl, oh, you're on. How did you do that? How are, how are you on? I thought you weren't able to. Oh, you're just on Facebook. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. I think that's all my questions I have. All right. So let's talk. Uh, let me just review. So we talked about oil and grease, and we talked about different types of darning feet tonight. Um, I gave you a sneak preview for the pattern that's going up tonight or tomorrow for our quilt as you go so long for Wednesday. Um Showed you what I worked on this weekend. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh well, I can't. I can't think what it is. So, if I'm forgetting something, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so I'll be back on Wednesday for the sew along, and then Friday again for a sip and sew. Um, I don't know what I'm working on. Oh, Linda Wheelis wants to know where you get the thread cutter. It's on our website, featherweightdoctor.com. Um, I think that's everyone. All right. I appreciate everybody joining me tonight. Uh, I hope everyone has a great night and a good week, and I'll look forward to talking to you on Wednesday. Bye, guys. We'll talk to you later.